What's good? I'm Kinell, and this is Sins to Cinema, where we get deep into the guts of the stranger side of cinema. Just letting you know with this little bit at the start that we now have a Patreon. Sub up to that, and you can get all these episodes early and ad-free, so you won't even see this bit at the start. Uh, you get them a few days before the main episodes drop out. We've got some great guests coming up. We've got some studio episodes. We've got some Zoom episodes with some fantastic rappers talking about the films they love and the films that influenced them. We've got a lot going on there. Plus, you get some bonus content like film reviews, all that kind of thing. I don't need to explain this to you. You know what a Patreon is. But, yeah, it's patreon.com slash Cinema. So check that out. Peace. Yes, people. What's good? I'm Kinell, and this is Sinister Cinema, where we get deep into the guts of the stranger side of cinema. Kinell Sinister Cinema is brought to you by Forgotten Sons Apparel. Check them out at forgottensonsapparel.co.uk. Forgotten Sons Apparel is a York-based streetwear brand drawing inspiration from alternative culture, tattoos, film, classic TV and cartoons from our childhood. In our own words, if you like our stuff half as much as we do, then we like it twice as much as you. I'm a big fan of this brand and I love the guys who make it. They've supported me for years, way before I was podcasting. They supported me in my battle rap career. You might have seen me rocking some of their garments on Don't Flop and other leagues. I love Forgotten Sons Apparel and I'm urging you all to check them out at ForgottenSonsApparel.co.uk. Right, now on with the show. Hey, what's good? Back at it. It is Mr. Always Had a Buzz of Every Rhyme I Wrote and Everybody Want to Know Me Like the Wi-Fi Code, Kin L himself. Back at it with the KSC Podcast. Uh, yeah, I've had some game shit going on, got a few new pods in the pipelines, all that. But, regret to announce, I'm back outside, mate. I am back outside. Uh, flipping. I, I had a thing come out on the Don't Flop Patreon. I'm not happy with that being my last bit of footage online. So uh, I'm going to have to get back outside and get some more stuff out there. So I will be in Bristol for, uh, what should we call it? Don't flop a comedy event with, uh, what should we, on the 23rd of February? Week on Friday, mate. Week on Friday. That's when it is. Uh, yeah, I'll be back down in Bristol. I always have a banging time in Bristol. we got some rap battles. Uh, I don't think the line's been announced, but there's some sick guys on there. Fucking, I'm clashing once again. Uh, and uh, what should we call it? There's some other comedy shit like the fucking, I don't know, whatever fucking comedians do, roast battles, whatever that fucking nonsense is. I don't know. It's one of them. But anyway, yeah. Uh, as you know, I've been getting into the whole games thing lately, like uh, making a bit of shit. I was just uh, showing uh, uh, our upcoming guest something I'm working on at the minute, and hopefully I'll be able to share that with you soon. And I might have a little early release of it on the Patreon. Yeah. And this one is going to be, uh, what should we call it, uh, available to play in browser as soon as I get that working. So you don't have to even have a swanky game in PC. So, yeah, sign up for the Patreon. Might be a little game drop in there for you in the very near future. However. Uh, what should we call it? There's been a lot of announcements in the world of horror gaming. Obviously, we're a horror podcast that just gets a lot of rappers on. That's who I know and that's who I like. Uh, so, yeah, fucking. And we've had some big announcements recently from uh, some people who've given us some amazing shit, but they've let us down in the past. Konami with the new Silent Hill announcements. They've announced a lot of shit. Some of it's not looking great. Some of it looking pretty fucking hard. But, obviously, with this being the KSC, I had to bring on someone, an expert on the franchise, and also one of my favourite rappers, like, don't use the term lightly, it is Ireland's finest, it is Johnny Darko. Yes, Johnny hey. fucking Darko, how are you doing? What a fucking intro, man. Hey, <laughs> uh, yeah, is right, is right, is I right. I never intros like that one. <laughs> It's because fucking, uh, what should we call it? It's all positivity here. Like, we we, can't, we fucking can't get that in fucking rap, can we? Like, no, fucking not anything, anymore. Like, like, <laughs> you're always being introduced by a rapper and the rapper's thinking, eh, I'm better, really. But no, no, we yeah, show love over here. Yeah, man. I get, so I, get I, get visual, I get a visual amazing intro for his title, Matt. So I'm hoping 
uh, when I battle over in London, I'll get visuals to do my intro when you can pay me back. Ah, uh, yeah, man. That's what we do. That's what we do. We keep it moving. That's yeah, it. man. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. When is it? We'll, we'll do the plugs up front. When is that battle? And when can people buy tickets and see you? Uh, it is Premier Battles Absolute. It's happening in London on the 2nd of March, and tickets are on sale right now. I battle an Aussie kid. It was supposed to go down actually here in, uh, in Dublin last August. Mm. There was a bit of a fuck up with my kids' flight, so we never went ahead. But I was happy with the material. TV got back to me, like, what well, they were in London. And I said, That's fucking what I'm doing. Oh, fucking excellent scenes, excellent scenes. Fucking and yeah. then, what was of that course, hmm? then, of course, I have the title match ah. in Belfast in July against Visual for the Premier Battles Irish title. Oh, yes. Fucking title match, yeah. Darko. Oh, not yes. Bad, not bad for a couple of battles in about two years. <laughs> <laughs> the Dark Lord, soon to be the Dark King. That's it. I hope Visual's watching. Yeah, uh, taking his throne in the north and, rec- and uh, uniting the counties. Absolutely. Yes, man. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, yeah, before we get into, like, the recent announcements, uh, uh, let's talk a bit more generally about Silent Hill. You're a big fan of the franchise. And uh, so uh, uh, how how did you first get into it, like? So I got into it maybe in the the early 2000s was the first time I ever played one. I had a friend that lived just across from where my nanny lived, Mm. and he had an older brother, and he was like, I was, I was playing Resident Evil. Resident Evil was the first horror game. Resident Evil 3 was the first horror game I ever played. And I was like, oh man, you've got to, you have to play Resident Evil. And he was like, no. My older brother has this game called Silent Hill. Mm. You need to try it. So I think that weekend we went over to his. We, we pure hyped ourselves up like, oh, we're going to get this. Man, I made it to the diner scene. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't play it. It's too scary. Oh. That was my first introduction. And then it wasn't until about, I want to say, oh, four, I bought, you remember the old PlayStation magazines you could get that would have demos in them? Yeah, yeah. I so got uh, the one I had, had a demo for Silent Hill 4, and I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. And I really liked it. It was just the subway section at the start of the game, and I was like, oh, I think I'll have to go back and play it. It's like, and then I absolutely fell in love, especially the second one. Yeah, man. The second one's, like, important for a lot of people. Like, that was sort of my introduction to the series. What happened was, <laughs> like, fucking... I was a student at the time, so it'd be, like, fucking... Like, uh, what should we call it? Like, five of us lads who lived together, like, in the same fucking sitting room. Just, like, smoking the shittest weeds that fucking possible. <laughs> fucking... Yeah, sitting there. Yeah, watching me mate play Silent Hill 2 and fucking... It was a bit of a game changer because, like, fucking, like, PlayStation 2 was, like, quite a new thing to our house. And, like, last time I remembered, like, fucking games were all, like, fucking, like, jumping on things and that. And suddenly it's... Uh, we're, we're dealing with grief and guilt and suppressed memories and all that kind of yeah, shit. Yeah, it, it was so... It was such a novelty at the time. Like... A couple of years beforehand, you would have got like Final Fantasy VII, I guess, which is, you know, kind of deals with some similar stuff, but not to this extent. Like, yeah. games were still kind of seen as like, children's toys, you know? Yeah. And, and fucking, I would, like, I, would have have, I would have loved to have seen the face of my mother if she had seen Silent Hill 2 back then. <laughs> yeah, fucking hell. Like, it. it it's an important piece of fucking work, like, and fucking... I, th- I think, like, particularly those, like, first four Silent Hill games, there was something fucking, like, magical that came together with them. You know, that sort of the disconnect of, like, Japanese people writing American stuff, the design, the music. Oh, and I feel like... I might sound like a fanboy or a boyist, but I still don't feel like anything else has captured that. They've redone that, you know. Mm. 
It's special. I replay, I replay the full score every single year. I actually just finished another mm. replay of two Saturday, and I, I started three. I was playing a bit of three yesterday. I made it just when you get to the to the town itself in three. Oh yeah, that's special. That's quite a way into three and all, like, isn't it? Like, yeah, it is. It is before you even get to the town. <laughs> you you, you have to the game before you even get there. Yeah, fucking like like uh, like that. That's something like particularly in the first four games, they fucking switched what you thought the series was in every entry. Mm-hmm. You know what's right. crazy as well. I, I, I seen, I went back and read reviews of Silent Hill 2 from back then, 2001. And people hated it. People mm. fucking hated it. They were like, oh, we want to see Alessa come back. We want to know what that's all about. Like, that's why Silent Hill 3 became Silent Hill 3. Yeah. I, 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 that's looking back it, now, like, like, it's, it's, it's regarded, too, as regarded, in my, in my opinion, it's true. It's the best like, survival horror game of all time. Yeah, fucking hard to argue with, man. Hard to argue with. I don't think there's been anything close to it until, like, fucking, like, like in terms of, like, the impact it's had, certainly. Like, fucking, I don't think there's ever been one that's been a real, like, fucking game changer to that degree. There's been amazing stuff, and there's been stuff that have done interesting things that are different. I'm a big fan of, like, the Fatal Frames, the Project Zero. Oh, particular. me too. Me too, I'm yeah. a fatal fan. Uh, even fear. You ever played a force fear? Yeah, yeah, man. I thought, I thought that was excellent. Yeah, with the slow motion and shit, like that was like fucking. It that was something that hadn't happened at the fucking time. Like, yeah. I think the yeah. the only game that even did a similar kind of thing with the slow motion bullet time was like Max Payne. Yeah. And that's a whole fucking, different genre. Yeah. Fucking like Max Payne, like fucking... Remedy of fucking like... Have you played Alan Wake 2? I did. I bought a launch day. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, Absolutely amazing. Too, man. Fucking like... I, that's one of the greatest pieces of any media I've consumed in the last 10 years. I'm fucking like waiting us wait fucking like months for the new game plus. To get the actual <laughs> ending, that was, I was yeah. all in on that, man. Fuck, like fucking. I think remedy, I'll make remedy, you. remedy are for the people. Mm. Remedy care about their fan base, you know. Yeah, and uh, fucking, there's uh, some of the few people that can like really do something different and like have it worth it. Like sometimes, a lot of times, like games try and add new mechanics. But the thing is, like, that's something I've realized I got into game developing is that, like, when people play horror games, they don't want to necessarily, like, learn to do, do new things. It can be you get the fucking crank, you stick it here, you turn it, turn off the gas, and then you can go into this bit, and, oh, here's a fucking key. Now you go back to it. People are happy with that, like, and it's been the same since, like, the first Resident Evil in 1996. It's just all about the atmosphere exactly. and the story. And the music and just everything. Yeah. There's no like it. I'm, I'm glad to see survival horror is, is kind of making a resurgence. Like in the early the early 2010s, you got like amnesia and stuff was blown up online and like yeah. fucking five nights at Freddy's and all. Like that was never my cup of tea because I was like, no, there's just real horror games out there and it doesn't matter, you know. But yeah, the okay. Game Awards, Alan Way 2 and Resident Evil 4 were up for the game of the year, and that's amazing. Mm. Yeah, did, you play, did, did you play Resident Evil 4 remake? Oh, fucking so many times. Like, we were talking about our cats <laughs> before we got on the fucking mic. One of my cats, like, had fucking, like, he, he was having, he had some, like, bad health shit that cost me a lot of fucking money, like, uh, that dropped, like, right on the foot. And it, it was literally the day after Resident Evil 4 came out. And I'm, like, not someone who replays games a lot. But fucking... Mm-hmm. Because I had no money and I a uh, morbid fear of my cat dying. Fucking, like, I, I was just in a terrible emotional state. I, like, fucking, I, I wasn't leaving the house because, like, I was pretty much working yeah. at home all the time. I was just fucking, like, 
finishing Resident Evil 4 and starting again because, like, that was the only thing I had to do. <laughs> and, like, fucking, like, I fucking, I, th- I got me fucking, like, speed runs down to, like, three hours, like, of just, like, starting it over and over <laughs> again. When fucking the Jesus DLC, Christ. when DLC came out, like, fucking, like, I, I like, uh, the fucking Ada Wong one, separate ways. ways. Yeah, when that came out, like, fucking, like, I think the second week I had it, I played. Uh, what should we call it? I played the fo- I played it like uh, all the way through on different difficulties, like four times in one sitting to just unlock all the shit. I actually have not played Separate Ways. I've not played the new Separate Ways. Oh, it's fucking fantastic! I don't, I don't know why. I just, I just never got around to it. I think when it dropped, there might have been something else I was playing. So I never got around to it, but I will have to go back and play it because I loved it in the original. Yeah. But it's, uh, what should we call it? Like, the original's, like, very much, like, just, like, flipping the assets in it. This is, like, a whole new side of the story. Uh, I need to check it out. But I have a friend who's similar to you. He played it, like, five or six times the way through. Yeah, man. But yeah, back to the Silent Hill. So we've, uh, what should we call it? Uh, we've had announcements. And like, uh, uh, it all started with like the big announcement last year when they said, we're doing fucking eight things. And uh, yeah. fucking. <coughs> and uh, what should we call I don't know what the fuck Silent Hill Ascension is. Have you watched any of it? Oh, I haven't watched any of it. I've, I've seen. Other people talk about it and seeing clips. I, I just, I can't, I can't deal with it myself. I can't yeah. deal. With, I can't sit there and go, this, this can't be Silent Hill. Like, this can't be what it's become. Yeah, fucking the, the yeah, fucking. I'm not sure. For those of you who haven't really been following it, and I've been following it either. It's basically an online sort of animated web series where people pay money. <laughs> Real money, yeah. To have a say on what the characters do next, it's microtransactions, it's emojis, it's fucking, it's not Silent Hill at all. <laughs> Did you see it? It's trauma emoji. Yeah. Oh fuck it. I it's... do kind of like. I do like that, and I was, I was thinking <laughs> I'd like that on a t-shirt, but then they put out official ones. I'm like, oh, I don't want an official one. I want a bootleg. Come on, the idea in a send off me and listen to games. Yeah. Because, like, Konami have been completely silent on the Silent Hill franchise for a very long time. The last we heard was PT. So we get these big announcements. 10 years. And it's, and it's one of those, like, fucking, like, that. these are all good sounding announcements, but you burned us before. And, like, uh, so we got. Uh, so, how do you feel about the Silent Hill 2 remake? I remember for maybe about two years before the, the, the transmission they did happen, there was rumours that Bloober were doing a yeah. Silent Hill 2 remake. And I only ever played Blair Witch by Bloober. Mm. I wanted to play Observer. I heard Observer was actually pretty good, but I, I never got around to it. And then I remember Bluebird announced that they were in a partnership with Konami. And then that was kind of like all the pieces are falling into place. I was like, they're definitely making this fucking sound they'll do remake. Yeah. And I, I, like, I understand, I understand, especially with how successful the Resident Evil remakes have been, and even the Dead Space remake, that it was only a matter of time. Mm. But I kind of wish maybe they started from the fourth game because the second one is so perfect to me. I don't. It doesn't need an update. It doesn't need a new coat of paint, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, like, I think all we really needed was, like, really good versions of the, uh, what should we call it, the HD collection. Just give us what the HD <laughs> collection should have been. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Them, game, them games are still broken. Yeah. What Fucking monsters up. in that game have the wrong sound effects and everything attached to them? <laughs> Fucking like, like in the HD, in there's a part in the HD collection. In remember towards the end of the game where you fight the two pyramid heads. Yeah. 
Fuck the the part where one of them stabs Maria while she's like dangling upside down, and if you look close, you, you have to Google that after this. One of the textures for her eyeball is a set of teeth, <laughs> and it's still in the game. It's fucking ridiculous, like that. Hey, D, HD collection. That is what I play a lot, though. Like, I've got like PS2 emulator on my computer. But, uh, like, fuck it, I've got the HD collection just for my Xbox. So, like, that's the one that's on the tally. But, like, oh, I've, I... got, I've got it as well. I've got it as well. And it's convenient, too, because you can still buy it on the Xbox Store right now. Yeah. And not have to Isn't pay it? a ridiculous amount of money for a PS2 copy. Yeah. But, like, Bloober Team, like, taking over, like, the, doing this remake, like, like, fucking, I've got more time for Bloober Team than most. You know, uh, I've, I've been playing the medium like, and like, fucking, I thought it was pretty oh, fucking yeah. good. Yeah, I, I, have, I have played the medium. I've played the medium. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. Like, like, fucking, like, but that's the thing, like, because I thought, like, when I saw that first trailer, people were like straight in on a fucking Bloober team. But I was like, that first trailer looks amazing. And they've already got the fucking oh, really? story and the creature designs and the fucking. <clears throat> Yamaoka's back on the soundtrack. It's yeah, pretty hard for me. I heard he goes back. Yeah. <clears throat> you've got, you, you've got the right thing. score. Nobody hates, nobody hates Silent Hill more than Silent Hill fans. Yeah. I, I, I do it too. I do it too. Like, I shit on, especially the Western ones. Like, I shit on them at times. But there is some good stuff you can take from all of them, you know? Yeah, well, I, I knew, especially as soon as you seen the blue world logo, I was like, "This is gonna get torn to fucking shreds." <laughs> see, see, I think like fucking, they're, they're quite an indie studio, and the thing is, like, fucking, if you look at the medium, like, fucking, like, playing that, you think these are the guys who can remake Silent Hill well. They're doing fixed camera angles in an interesting way, yeah, with good controls. For modern players, like so, fucking, they wouldn't even have to do that. But they thought, okay, we're going to third person. I could see that with the recent Resi remakes. But then we got that combat trailer. It does not look good. It looks rough, it? <laughs> <laughs> it's so janky. Now I, I did hear as well. There's a there's a guy called Dusk Golem who yeah. has leaked a lot of some real stuff. You know, you probably know Dusk Golem, do you? Yeah, yeah. Fucking, and he uh, said he's seen footage, and the footage that we've seen in the trailer looks identical to the footage he's seen last May. So this is mm. from an older build by the looks of it. Yeah, that makes sense, like, because, like, fucking, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, like, because I'm looking at it through game dev head now, I'm thinking, like, fucking hell, I do fix that, like. And, <laughs> you know, you've got... Dodgy box colliders, janky animation, like, see, see, I don't, like, people have been outspoken about it, and Bloober have said, it's not fucking finished, and apparently that is, like, much earlier fucking footage, but that says to me that fucking, like, Konami is saying, like, I don't give a shit what you've done with the textures and the stories and the settings, <coughs> <coughs> We're just showing your man hitting a nurse with a stick. Oh my God, <laughs> and you're going to love it. Yeah. It was a that's fucking... Coming, like, that's coming all over. Yeah. Fucking like, you know, going into pachinko machines and skateboards when we just want another fucking game. So, like, fucking, yeah. That, <laughs> that was the biggest insult. Like, the pachinko machines, they... They're hilarious for us to laugh at. Being from the West, but Pachinko mm. is a is a normal thing in Japan, you know. Like, the, I, like I would love to get some Japanese Silent Hill fans' opinions on all this because I'm not seeing anything from that far, you know. Yeah, I well, some Japanese it. people are like good and red forums and stuff. I was over in Japan in like 2003, and fucking like Pachinko places scared the shit out of me. <laughs> 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 uh, fucking like, like you just go into them. It's like fucking sensory overload. Like, like that fucking like. Did you, play, uh, did you ever play Cyberpunk? Oh, I fucking love Cyberpunk, man. 
that's what it reminds me of. That's it just it's cyberpunk yeah. everywhere. Yeah. That's it. I mean like so, cyberpunk like fucking like sort of like was it what like the genre was inspired by Japan at least visually really in it like cuz it all comes oh, from yeah, Blade Runner, yeah. Hmm. It's like uh, it looks like a chair. Yeah, man. Fucking like I, uh, I went on a bit thing trying to watch like all the cyberpunk films like last year, and uh, fucking like, like fucking like the thing Akira takes from is like there was these like Japanese like biker gang movies from like the late seventies, early eighties. They're fucking very good. Like there's a couple of them on Arrow, stuff like Burst City and shit. That sounds yeah. quite heat to me, bro. They're fucking heavy, man. Like fucking. The, the, there was like loads of like girl biker gang films, like Stray Cat Blues or something like. I can't. That might be what it's called. I'm not sure, but fucking like, uh, yeah. There's a lot of that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's that's it. Like fucking like, I am concerned that Konami are calling a bit too many of the shots on this, like because yeah, especially I've seen devs for Bloomberg come out like. They're being hounded on Twitter, basically. They're being hounded yeah. constantly over time. Does so. I mean, I like, it kind of pisses me off too. Like, I'm obviously excited to see what happens. Maybe mm. a bit, a bit nervous about it. But mm. I mean, we waited ten years. What's a couple more months to hear news? You know. And I'm yeah, seeing a lot of these over devs are coming out saying, "Look, like, that's up to Konami. Like, they're in charge of all the marketing. Anytime you're going to hear anything, it has to come from them. You know." And they're so yeah. nonchalant that it's, it's just Konami as usual. Just always at it. I mean, like, fucking... Surely it's got to be the most insane decision in gaming history to cancel Silent Hills after PT. <laughs> yep. Yep. That, well, that blew up so much. Because, uh, like, obviously Silent Hill games were, were massive especially in the early 2000s. But by the time PT came out, like, the casual gamer never really, like, heard of Silent Hill or even played it, you know? And then PT comes out and it literally shuts down the internet. Yeah. Fuck it, like, I, I was watching, like, the original stream of, like, the first person who fucking got to the end of it. Yeah, Fuck it was it. Some, some girl, right? I remember seeing that. Yeah, Australian girl, like, fucking, I can't yeah. remember her name. Shut up, her, though. But like, imagine fucking like, like fuck, like I seeing that end scene from PT for the first time is fu fucking like the the first time anyone saw that like fucking, and then finding out it was Silent Hills like, because PT was kind of a phenomenon as a fucking like, just random puzzle game that no one knew anything about. Yeah, it, it spawned an entire genre of horror games. Yeah. Fucking like the PT. There's fu there's so many horror games you could just cut, categorize as PT River. You've seen what I'm doing at the minute. Like, I'm not shy about <laughs> yeah. it. Like, like the Visage. Have you heard of Visage? Mm -hmm. Visage. Yeah. Yeah, man. Fucking, I played that, man. That's fucking. That, like, that. There's so many of them, like particularly in the indie sphere, like uh, on a. That's just like the first thing. I think people like I know myself. I fucking like became a game dev like a few months ago because I, I like I want to contribute to this massive pile of things like. And fucking like you know when you sort of find your own style, it's like the first first bars you write, man. Uh, fucking like you're trying to sound like your favorite rapper and like. Yeah, that's it. Like. That's, that's, it. that's exactly it. So, like, PT's, like, fucking... He's, he's, he, it's like this phenomenon that's created creatives. Oh, man, I got, I got so depressed when... Like, if I go through my name, my reality PlayStation now, mm -hmm. PT is at the bottom of it, but it's got, like, a, like a circle through it. Like, I can't really download it. I get depressed every time you see it. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's that still image of the PT thing uh, written on, like, I think it's a great song, and you see, like, a forest behind it. 
I see every time I look at my game, I'm like, like, oh, what I would do to play that again in a, on the original PlayStation hardware. Yeah. And fucking like Konami just have it sitting there, but they not only cancelled it, they soured their relationships with all the creatives involved. So it'll. Yep. I played like Unreal PT and like there's another one, like uh, the remakes people have done. And they're, they're good, but they're basically just like uh, reproductions of it. But it's like, it's how influential it fucking was. Like, man, I've, I've seen PT recreated in Doom. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's still a phenomenon, really. Like, yeah. And and fucking, it's, oh man, I just I can imagine I can only imagine what Hideo Kojima would have done. I love Kojima's games. The Metal Gear series is up there for me. Like Metal Gear Solid 3 is one of my favorite games of all time. I would have loved to have seen what he could have done with that. Yeah. I'm excited and about his new know. project. Yeah, that, that's apparently a horror game, right? I think that's a an Xbox exclusive though, right? Yeah, yeah. Fucking, I remember uh, something leaked about that not too long ago, before Christmas, or maybe a little bit longer. Something leaked about that, and I was curious. So I wonder if he was going to like reuse any ideas he had for Silent Hill and that. Yeah, fucking, I, I, like, I, I'm excited to see. We don't know a great deal about it yet, but I am very fucking excited. I want to know what I'm ripping yeah. off next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, he's, a, he's a genius, man. Yeah, oh, man. is a genius. Fucking Fuck <laughs> <laughs> Fucking I will say, I will say, I remember when Death Stranding first got announced, and I was mm. like, this is going to be, this is going to be what Silent Hill was supposed to be, and then Death Stranding was just off the wall, completely different. Like, I guess it has it kind of has this horror aspect with the BT things and stuff. But yeah. I was like, this is not what I wanted at all. I have grown <laughs> to appreciate Death Stranding, though. I still haven't played it, you know. It, oh man, it's oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's literally nothing like it. I had to go. <laughs> I found like this random guy in a house, like in the middle of nowhere. It looks like a slanted countryside. I found some random guy who wanted me to find them vinyl records, and I just went and got vinyl records. And I was like, "This is fucking amazing!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking, I owe it to myself to get onto it, like particularly before the new one drops. Yeah, no, you should, man. And the soundtrack too would put me onto, uh, put me onto some bands and stuff I never would have listened to. There's an Icelandic band, and their name escapes me right now. Uh, but they made a song for a couple of the trailers in the game, and I have them on my spot where they're pretty good. Yeah, fucking music. Music in fucking games is like, fucking, it's a big thing now. Like, It's amazing how much regular tunes I bump I've found through games. Yeah. That's why I listen to Akira Yamaoka. <laughs> yeah, man. Fucking. But I, have oh, fucking yeah. I have a sleep playlist for my Spotify. And it's just his, like, ambient silent little sounds. Fucking right. Like, just just fucking save room in yourself to sleep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Save mm. room is in it, man. <laughs> the Resident mm. Evil 4 save room. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. I, I, there's a podcast called Safe Room. And uh, for the, there's a podcast called Safe Room. And like their theme tune is like uh what should we call it? Like a safe room theme tune. And fucking like I can't listen to it first thing in the morning while I'm working because I start dozing back off. <laughs> I love the way I, I guess that's how they talk about survival horror stuff. Mm. Yeah. Like fucking It's it, like it's a, it's a that's what I say, like the fucking like the actual tropes of the genre haven't changed and haven't needed to in fucking 30 years at this point. It is just all about the atmosphere. It is just all about the story. It is just about the characters, the music, the weird, scary shit. I, it, it never needs to change. 
in my opinion, it never needs to change. You can give it kind of a new coat of paint, but they're the fundamentals. That's what's going to get you in. Like, even playing, I've been playing Silent Hill 2 when I was replaying it the other day, and I had earphones on the 3D earphones. Mm. And, like, I was like, I've, I've beaten this game at least 7 million times in my life. Mm. And I was getting freaked out by, like, I was hearing noises I never noticed before. Even in Silent Hill 3, I was paused on the save menu. You know when you, you go to the symbol yeah. thing and you go to save the game? And I just left it on the menu. I checked my phone and stuff. And I heard music I'd never heard before. Mm. I was just on the save menu for maybe like 40 seconds and music started playing I'd never heard before. How the fuck were they fitting it all on a DVD? Like, Man, Silent Hill 3 still looks unbelievable. Yeah. Like the animations and everything are still on the that game came out in 2003. Yeah, fucking like uh what should we call that? I've like I always play like uh me uh what should we call it when I'm replaying through fucking Heather's outfit with all the tattoos on. The fucking oh, like yeah, it <laughs> and like fucking like that still looks fucking banging, like and the fucking textures yeah. like, it's, it's incredible to see like just, just between two and three, because they weren't that far apart. What, how much had come on with like texturing and what could be done with the PlayStation Two? It's, it's crazy, man. And, and some of the tools, like facial animations, are absolutely amazing. But they're nowhere near as good as trades. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure the game came out even less than a year after two. Yeah, for, it was a proper rush thing, like because like. It came out really soon after, and like uh, the reviews would have been out by the time that flipping they were saying like, "No, we need the cult back. We need a lesser. We need all this." What's oh, crazy as well, you could tell it was worse because obviously they're they're reusing a lot of like, some locations like Brookhaven Hospital, but mm. like what you were saying about atmosphere, it feels completely different between the two games. Mm. Like fucking, this is the thing. I was when the movie dropped, the first movie. I was in the cinema to see it, like, and uh, fucking like, I was only familiar with Silent Hill two, so I thought I was going to be watching like a Jacob's Ladder fucking film or something. But like, I watched it, and it was like, like, what the fuck's all this with the cult and shit? Like, (laughs) I think in Silent Hill two, you you, you, there's like a passing mention of the cult in in the prison. You find a document that mentions it, and you see our logo on the cell wall. But that's that's pretty much all of the cult in Silent Hill two. Yeah, fucking yeah. There's barely any kind of reference to it. It's just like this weird shit goes on in the, the town, and that's all there needs to be. And like that, that's kind of that's kind of where uh, what should we call it? Some of the Western ones went a bit shonky with it because they were always trying to get the elements in and like fucking connect things. And you don't need law uh, to the town where weird shit happens. Yeah, you we, know, we've already got several games. <laughs> that was the Western's problem, and the Western problem as well was that they were they were trying so hard to replicate. Silent Hill 2 story. Like Silent Hill 2 story now in a vacuum, it is amazing, but it's kind of predictable, you know. Like, you know what? Yeah. This guy definitely murdered his wife, you know. Yeah. Fucking and then the Western yeah. ones were all like, oh, oh he, he murdered his brother or his son. And he's just like, oh, come on. Like, I feel like every time one of the new ones came out, I picked it up, turned it around, and I was like, hey, who did this guy kill? Uh, fucking. My, mind you, uh, what should you call it? I've uh, been playing Homecoming a bit lately, and like the big twist, you weren't in the army, you daft sod. <laughs> Stolen yeah. valor. Stolen valor. Yeah, ridiculous. Uh, uh, we'll pull it back. Another thing we got to fucking mention is because you played it and I haven't, uh, but I've watched a few playthroughs of it. Is the short message? Yes. Yes. I've, uh, I've played through it twice now. Twice. Yeah. There's not a lot of subtlety in it. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. But it's not very subtle. It's, it is very on the nose. And it's, it's, but it is dealing with like dark, dark subject matter. There's, you know, you, you see self-harming and stuff. And it's a bit, it's a bit on the nose, though. 
But it was, the atmosphere is absolutely amazing, I think. Yeah. This is the thing, like, I was looking at it, and it felt like fucking, like, it was influenced by all the in indie developers that came after being influenced by PT. By PT. <laughs> exactly. I, I was, it, I was like, I, I could see where the box colliders go. I could see where every, how it's all been put together. But mm. in terms of atmosphere, like fucking and and, and story, they have done something. Yeah, they did. They did. And as well, uh, they, uh, I feel like they kind of they had the heart on their sleeves, and then you knew it was going to be a dark one going in. And the monster design, man, Masahiro Ito, the fucking creator of Pyramid Head, and all the monsters you see in Silent Hill Two, Storm and Tree. That cherry blossom monster from the short message is fucking amazing. The way it moves is yeah. absolutely amazing. You didn't need to overdo it with like gore or blood or anything. It, it just looks like it looks like a girl covered in cherry blossoms, and it's terrifying. Yeah, fucking like that's why you got to go to the innovators because they're the ones that are going to come up with the some with the thing that no one else would have thought of. Yeah, a fucking girl covered in cherry blossom leaves, and it's terrifying. It's scarier than every monster since Silent Hill 4. <laughs> so that's the thing, like, because I, I, I feel like uh, like that might be something we see again in Silent Hill F, which is set in Japan. That's what I'm guessing. My guess was the short message was meant to kind of be like a love letter to the series because the, I started noticing stuff that were references to the, the other series, uh, the other entries in it. Like, there's a part where you see a hole drawn on a wall. I was like, well, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. There's a part where you walk into a room and you see a, like a, a child's doll and then its head falls off and there's blood. I was like, that happens to a mannequin in Silent Hill 3. Like, I felt like it was meant to be kind of like a love yeah. there. But then the cherry blossom monster, my first thought was, this has to be related to Silent Hill. Yeah. That's it. And there's yeah. a reference in the, in the short message. You find a document detailing about a Japanese witch who, uh, I think the town born for or something like that and it was in like the 60s or something like that. I was like, I think Silent Hill F is meant to be set in the 60s and it's yeah, Japanese, I, so I'm guessing is this meant to be this character reference? Like, Yeah. It makes sense. Like, it'd be a good place to drop, like, the, the thing that did crack me up about it while I'm watching playthroughs is they've got a fucking, uh, what should we call it, put different things like in it and like sort of set things up and one is they said oh due to due to covid fucking fucking <laughs> like silent hills everywhere in the world now COVID? <laughs> silent hills everywhere in the world. yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's it silent is. hill effects people are seeing a lot of fog and feeling guilt <laughs> Like, like fog and guilt didn't exist before Silent Hill. Yeah. Absolutely fucking unhinged decision making there. Fucking yeah. right. Yeah. So, uh, the voice acting is terrible too. The voice acting is terrible. It sounds like a fucking one of those cheap anime dogs. It's not great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, the dialogue doesn't sync up too because their mouths, it's obviously meant to be natively Japanese, you know. I would have yeah. rather they actually just gave us Japanese voice acting and just gave me subtitles. That's it, like, fuck, if I'm watching Japanese characters, I'd rather fucking sit and play it with subtitles because like, it just feels more yeah, natural. Because that's how I'll consume a Japanese film. Yeah, it's like, uh, have you ever heard of Forbidden Siren? Yeah, I have, like. Fucking like, uh, I've got the, I've, the English I've, I've, voice acting is so bad. <laughs> yeah, fucking like, I've, I've, I've got them for me little PS2 emulator. Like, I've got the old ROMs. Like, but that's it. Like, fucking like, I was trying to like play all the Fatal Frame ones because, like, uh, fucking like that they reissued five and fucking I got that and they reissued four and I got that. I enjoyed playing through them with like fucking, you know. It, Japanese language with subtitles and then like I could only find the western I can't find subtitled ones because there wasn't any that only available in dubbed and the voice acting in the title frame yeah, it's just so bad <clears throat> the whole era like fucking like 
like that like voice actors weren't didn't really know how to do computer games back then like yeah well you, you look at you look at fucking the four suicide builds still people are still trying to hunt down the guy who voiced Harry Mason. Nobody knows who the fuck, fuck it was. People think it's the guy that voiced Dracula in the uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and then I think that got his crew. Like nobody knows who even voiced him. Yeah, fucking like I, I've heard that that people have been trying to track him down, and occasionally they get as far as bumping into someone and says, "Oh, I do know, but he doesn't want people knowing about it." Fucking like I hear people that are having that kind of connection. Like, is he actually in Silent Hill now? <laughs> he probably is. <laughs> I don't think he's done voice work since then. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, just completely fucking disintegrated. Fucking speaking, hell. speaking of voice acting, people people like to shit on the voice acting from Silent Hill too. I love it, man. I love how awkward and all it is. Like how Angela speaks and all that's Donna Bork. Donna Bork, I think, is still at Konami. And she's a musician as well. But uh, the guy who voices James Quite he, he is a total conspiracy nut now. Like yeah. total conspiracy nut. I was friends with him on Facebook. I messaged him and I was like, Oh man, I'm I'm a, I'm a massive fan, so I'm going to change my life. <laughs> he's like, Oh thanks, man. And then you check his his uh, fucking Facebook post and he's talking about 5G and how AIDS doesn't exist. <laughs> oh mate. He's got he's full full with it. It. <laughs> like he's one hundred percent in a tinfoil hat twenty four seven, like sleeps in a tinfoil hat. Fucking hell, like so 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 like the first two Silent Hill pr- protagonists in real life are missing and insane. Yeah. Missing and in the missing part of their mind. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Oh, and then you get to Silent Hill 3 and has the best voice acting in the whole series, man. Mm. And like fucking Silent Hill like, 3 uh, is incredible. Yeah, like fucking like, like, I th- fucking like, I feel like Heather's like one of the fucking like best like female protagonists in computer games ever. Certainly the best written. 100%. Like, 100%. But the performance, like, fucking adds to it, like, it doesn't feel like one of those awkward, disjointed ones. Like, yeah, it, it also doesn't sound like, uh, it doesn't sound like what you get with kind of these new voice actors where they're trying to sound young. Yeah. Heather Morris, the girl who voiced Heather, Actually, sounds like a like a seventeen year old or an eighteen year old. She was in her thirties yeah. when she did it. Yeah, she fucking she's a goat, man. Nailed, man. Heather Morris is the goat. Yeah, man. Fucking shout out Heather Morris. Respect. Oh but yeah, um, we're coming up to about fifty minutes, so I reckon we'll wrap it up about here. Like this has been a fucking ace chat, man. Could fucking rant on for fucking hours, like and all. It's been great to get. Yeah, am I right thinking this is like your first ever podcast? First ever podcast, yeah. Fucking right, man. Hey, say yeah, it's been yeah. a pleasure having you on. Uh, reminder: premierbattles.club to get tickets for Johnny Darko versus I Kid on what was the date? Second uh, of March. Okay, cool. And do you want anything else you want to plug? Socials, music. Uh, Johnny Dark Lord and everything. Uh, I've got an album on Spotify. I've got an EP on Spotify. Uh, just follow me. You know, I've got a title match coming up in July too. Check it out. And Canel, we definitely need to get back on here and talk when the remake comes out. Oh yeah, man. We will. We will. We will reunite and form like Voltron. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. This has been a fantastic podcast. Thank you so much for guesting. Definitely going to have you back. I'm Ken. Yeah. This is in the KSC. Peace.